The music still refused to play, but I was in too much torment with myself to care. The two voices in my head were trying to reassure me that this was some kind of nightmare, but I knew it was all happening. It was all so real, and my throat was incredibly dry. My tears still ran down my face as I entered the tower. The Tower of Deceased Pokemon. Pokemon Tower. As soon as I entered, the atmosphere was different from outside. The room was darker than normal, and there wasn't anybody there. There was a forlorn silence, but faintly, music was playing. I began to ascend the spiral staircase, and the music got louder with every floor I raised. Each floor was how it should be, but much darker, and with no trainers or wild Pokemon. The graves were painted black, and on the final staircase, I saw... Cameron used rage. Jessica died and block red capital letters spiraling up the stairs. One letter on each second step. I finally reached the top, and surprisingly, found everybody there. All of the trainers from the tower, the gym leaders, Elite Four, Belle, Sharon, N, and Alder. They were all here looking towards the main step to the bell at the top of the tower. As I approached them, people stopped me. What they said was what shocked me and made my throat dry out even more, and fresh tears well up in my eyes. Bell, Cameron, how could you do such a thing? Sharon, you... I looked up to you. How could you betray me? Alder, this is unforgivable. But maybe she will. N, you said that you wanted Pokemon and people to live in peace. Then why did you? As I rose the final steps, Bell, Sharon, N and Alder all followed, blocking the way back out. I went forward and stopped. There, standing in front of the bell, was undeniably a Raichu sprite. The Raichu rang the bell, the sound sounding eerie with the music, which I now recognized as the 8-bit Lavender Town music from Pokemon Yellow. The music suddenly stopped, and another text bubble appeared, black with white writing. You came, Cameron. I did. I whispered quietly to the screen, sniffling as I stared at it. The Raichu sprite turned around and took a few steps towards black, only stopping one or two spaces away. Do you know why I called you here? A yes-no box appeared again. I pressed yes with shaking thumbs, and the Raichu shook its head in response. No, you don't. Don't lie. I called you here so you can see what you did to me. The sprite took a final few steps towards black, and the screen fuzzed out the larger sprite replacing most of the screen, like when N sometimes talked. What I saw, however, almost made me sick. It was a Raichu, but no Raichu I had ever seen. The creature's ears were flattened to its skull, a huge gash leading from one ear to the other across the forehead. Blood-stained fur was shown all the way down its face, past its sorrowful eyes, and scratched cheeks. 
Its arms hung limply by its sides, and its tail drooped limply over its shoulder. The lightning bolt at the tip of it, having a large chunk ripped out of it. The Raichu's mouth had dried blood around the lips, and some still dribbled from the corner of its mouth. But it was the main part of the Raichu that terrified me. Right where the chest was, the abdomen and stomach area of the Raichu too, there was a gaping wound. Inside could be seen intestines, bones, cracked ribs, and with copious amounts of blood dripping from it, covering the white belly fur and staining it red. I could see its heart, and with a sickening turn on my stomach, I saw it beating feebly within the shattered ribcage. Panicking, I pressed the A button repeatedly to try and get that image away from the screen. Instead, a text box appeared, the writing digital and red, just like the blood coming from the Raichu. What's wrong, Cameron? Can't stomach what you did to me? Your closest friend? The one you so mercilessly killed? I'm sorry! I screamed suddenly, staring at the Raichu's face. I'm sorry! With that, I crumpled over my screen and sobbed. Jessica! It was an accident. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to do anything to you. You're still my Pokemon. You're still my friend. None of this was meant to happen, Jess. Don't, don't hate me. It was all a stupid, stupid accident. I cried for a solid few minutes before finally looking at the screen. Jessica had gone, and the overworld Raichu sprite was simply standing there, looking at Black. Nothing was said for a moment, and I simply stared at the screen. Finally, a text box appeared. Was it truly an accident? A yes-no box appeared. I pressed yes, and there was another pause. The Raichu sprite turned around and walked back towards the bell before another text box appeared. Do you regret what you did? Another yes-no box. I frantically pressed yes, more tears making their way down my face. There was another pause before Jessica finally turned around, staring back at Black. Jessica believes you. I felt a wave of relief wash over me as I saw the Raichu sprite walk back over to Black. The screen flashed up with the gruesome Raichu sprite again, but this time the sorrowful eyes were replaced with soft ones, a small, weak smile on its face. Do you still love me? There was no yes-no box, but instead, it asked if I wanted to record or check mic options. I knew my DS microphone was fine, so I pressed record and took a deep breath. Jessica, I'm so sorry for what I did to you. I wish I could reverse what I put you through. I should have never have forgotten. You're not just a bunch of pixels and data, but a being just like me. I'm really sorry. I promise. I'll never do it again. Ever. I'll be more careful. I'll... I'll never restart a Pokemon game ever. All I want... is your forgiveness for my stupidity. I do still love you, Jessica. The picture of Jessica on screen nodded and it faded out. The overworld returned, and Jessica appeared again as a Raichu sprite. This time, however, Black spun around in a circle, and a small Pokeball flew from his hand. A flash of white light engulfed Jessica, and the ball closed. As Black moved forward to pick it up, 
a new text box appeared. Thank you, Cameron. You really do remember. I smiled at the screen. And as I did, Sharon, Belle, and an alder all walked up to Black and surrounded him. The screen faded out, and Black reappeared in front of the bell. He rang the bell, and the usual message appeared. Instead of what normally happens, however, Black walked away from the bell with the screen still focused on it. As it faded, I saw a few ghost silhouettes. A Charizard, a Blastoise, a Venusaur, a Sandslash, and a Dragonite. All of my old Pokemon Yellow team had been laid to rest in the Celestial Tower, never returning, but never forgotten. The screen blacked out and returned me to Miss Stralton City. A message popped up saying that the game had been saved. I checked my Pokemon and saw Jessica in my sixth slot. Opening her page, a huge wave of nostalgia and comfort greeted me and my other two voices as we looked at the screen. Greeting us was a level 100 Raichu, modest nature, female, and with the nickname Jessica, and the OT as Cam, which was my original Pokemon Yellow character name. Moving to the moves section, I saw that her stats were exactly how they were left in yellow, and her moveset was exactly the same as her old yellow moveset. Thunderbolt, Double Team, Submission, and Surf. I smiled broadly. She had forgiven me and decided to join me once again. As I pressed B to leave the page, one final message popped up. The large Raichu picture appeared again, but this time there were no cuts or internal organs shown. What was shown was the smiling face of a healthy Raichu beaming at the screen. A message box popped up as the Raichu's mouth moved as if it were saying the words. Thank you, Cameron, for taking me back. Oh, and by the way, the screen changed briefly. The picture now had one paw up, and I saw something in her paw that made my eyes widen and show that no matter how much anyone would prove otherwise, this was no joke or hack. In her paw sat the final missing part to my Pokemon Yellow cartridge. I never truly forgot you either. I hope you listen to this and realize that to us, it may just seem like a video game. But Jessica taught me that if you truly love something enough, it becomes a part of you and will never leave you. I have never broken or restarted a Pokemon game since. I am careful with all my games. I don't want to upset anybody like Jessica ever again. I'm just so glad that she was so forgiving and loving of me. Thank you, Jessica.